Well, coming up on today's show, the 2018 Hyundai Sonata plug-in gets a price drop. Is it a week to forget or remember for Tesla and Elon? And more details on those Porsche chargers, which we now know are going to be called turbochargers. Well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Hello and welcome to the Sunday, the 22nd of July edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Got a few new supporters to say hello to at the end of the show and two massive EV gatherings with EV drivers. I'll fill you in on those after the news today. Well, first of all, Volkswagen Group Canada announced the formation of Electrify Canada. It's a new company that's going to build ultra-fast EV DC charging all across Canada. Uh, the EV chargers will be operational by the second quarter of 2019, so they're going to be up and running pretty soon, according to Eric Waltz at Future Car. Electrify Canada is an extension of Volkswagen's Electrify America. Uh, that's created as a catalyst to promote the adoption of EVs and somewhat in retribution of 2015's Dieselgate scandal. Was it really three years ago? Wow. Where VW admitted it tampered with diesel vehicle software to bypass the stringent emissions requirements. Well, earlier this year, Electrify America announced plans to construct the largest EV charging network in the USA, eventually exceeding the size of Tesla's supercharging network. The initial plan includes the installation in Canada of 32 EV charging stations near major highways and in major metro areas. We're talking British Columbia, Alberta, Ontario, Quebec. Each charging site will have four chargers on average and use the non-proprietary uh, DC fast charging technologies CCS and CHAdeMO, same as Electrify America. Well, they say Electrify Canada's EV charging power is going to range from 150 kilowatts to 350 kilowatts offering rapid charging. The higher 350 kilowatt rate suitable for those long-range large battery vehicles uh, coming on the market over the next couple of years. So that's great news. Uh, the way I see that is they are future-proofing it as well. Great investment that's coming and more reasons to be assured that if you are doing those long journeys, those road trips in Canada, because there can be a bit of a distance to travel between places in Canada, uh, that you're going to have some ultra-fast rapid charging uh, to plug your EV into. Well, the Hyundai pricing was released for the refreshed 2018 Sonata hybrid a couple of months ago, back in April. But information about its plug-in hybrid sibling was nowhere to be found until today, according to Andrew Croc at CNET.com. Hyundai's finally released pricing for the 2018 Sonata plug-in hybrid. It's going to start at $33,250. That is $1,350 cheaper than last year's base price. The car's actually getting cheaper to buy. And it's not like the standard equipment has decreased. Now, the Sonata plug-in hybrid mates a 2-litre gas engine to a 9.8 kilowatt-hour battery. Pretty good size. And a 67-horsepower uh, electric motor. It's got a 28-mile range on battery power alone. That's one mile higher than last year's model. Well, the battery can charge to full in less than three hours on a 240 volt level two charger and that's fantastic news hyundai have got a lot to be proud of whether it's the new kona full bev or the various flavors of the ionic which continues to get great reviews and long waiting lists if only they could make a few more of them please uh, but now the sonata plug-in hybrid as well uh, doing uh, some good good miles on oh, not too much money well, has it been a week to forget or a week to remember for Elon Musk? If you remember this time last week, we were talking mini subs and perhaps not great things being said on Twitter. Many people saying a week to forget to write off for Tesla and Elon Musk. But I would, how about you flip this the other way and look at it maybe maybe on the positive side. Now, look, starting with a Wired.com article earlier this month, the German car rental company Next Move set a new range record in a Model 3. They covered 622 miles on a single charge. That's more than twice the promised figure. Okay, they did it on a track under controlled conditions at 22 miles an hour and with autopilot engaged 
steering and doing the speed. Uh, a dummy was in the car for the 28-hour slog to reduce weight. And yes, this was done under completely controlled conditions with nobody put at risk uh, by not actually a human being inside the car. They had to start off the challenge and then somebody got out the passenger door with a dummy in the driver's seat. That, and even, uh, even the company that did it said, yes, we have a new range record, but no... Nobody should ever try this. So that was a, a positive piece of news this week. Then we heard Munro and Associates reversing its findings. Now, uh, previously, they'd been critical of the Model 3. And then, by the time they'd taken it apart, they called it a symphony of engineering. After completing their teardown of the vehicle, found Tesla could make about 30% margin on each vehicle. And that, that was obviously the vehicles start at $35,000 when they start to be made in Q1, Q2 next year, all the way up to about $80,000. So I, th I, I don't think the, the exact spec was published as well, but it was realistic to get the 30% margin better than any other electric car, better than many ICE cars as well. And Sandy Munro telling Autoline Network, I have to eat crow. That was a new phrase on me, by the way. Then, the next day we heard Tesloop. They offer rides between cities in Southern California and Nevada, publishing a blog post this week saying that their um, Model S 90D, I think it's a 90D, had passed uh, 400,000 miles and transported thousands of passengers, making it one of the world's best-travelled Teslas, if not the best. And Tesloop say the seats and interior are holding up really well. I would add to that, Tweets from Elon this week, including he had to take to Twitter because an analyst who wouldn't name their sources, but an an you wonder whether people do this just to get talked about for profile. An analyst said they were losing reservations for the Model 3 faster than they were gaining them, but with no evidence to that. And so I'm, I'm just massively surprised. You can... Uh, you know, if you hate electric cars, as this analyst probably does, or he just hates Tesla, uh, or maybe he's got shares in combustion cars or, or oil companies, I'm just surprised that you're allowed to say anything you want in America, even if it's not true, and face no consequences, because it's not like that in many countries in the world. Anyway, so Elon had to take to Twitter and do what Tesla don't do, and that's name how many reservations they're getting. 5,000 for the Model 3 in the last week alone and 2,000 reservations for S and X in the last calendar week, which is more than they're able to produce in a week at the moment. Net reservations increasing. He shouldn't have to offer those clarifications. They should wait till the the quarterly calls and the shareholder calls. Uh, anyway, moving on. Marquez Brownlee got his hands on the new Model 3 performance and loved it. And Elon said that with the new Model 3 performance, they could even bring the 0 to 60 time down to 3.3 seconds. If you fancy changing the tyres to some wider, stickier tyres, they chose a compromised tyre for best range slash performance. But if you do want to go and max it out, you can change the rubber and get 3.3 seconds 0 to 60 on a pretty affordable sedan. That's amazing. And finally, Business Insider, who I didn't realise until it recently, <laughs> the little strange cave that I've been living in, seemed to really hate Tesla. Uh, from the article that the I'd read and was just massively shocked, uh, I was kind of doing some catch-up on that, and, and apologies if I was, I've been out of the loop. Uh, but they really, uh, over the years, have, have, have really been against EVs, and particularly Tesla. Even Business Insider yesterday... Uh, saying that when Tesla reports its earnings sometime in the next few weeks, well, I'll, I'll help them out with that, with a specific date. It's going to be the 1st of August, because it's not that hard to go to ir.tesla.com, and it tells you uh, for the investor relations site. However, uh, they do say Tesla could lose 50% of its entire pre-order for its Model 3 and still have 200,000 cars on their books still to make. Uh, sustaining the production rate, even if it was 2,000 a week, and it's 5,000, well, it will be. Uh, they've dropped down a little bit, but they're going to go back to 5,000. This The target is 6,000 now by the end of next month. Uh, it would still mean $5 billion in revenue, additional revenue. They call it a tsunami of cash on the way for Tesla. For the bears, they say it's clear that wagering on the bad news has been a sucker's bet. And even when... So I didn't realise about this kind of really negative campaign that certain news outlets and bloggers have had against Tesla until recently, coming from the other side of the Atlantic. But catching up on all that, I'm massively surprised to see 
Business Insider now changing their tune and writing really positive articles about it. But here's something that makes me a little bit sad, uh, a little bit angry. I don't know how you feel about this. Wall Street Journal have also been strong critics of Tesla for years. But the Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Dan Neal was given the chance to drive a Model 3 performance first this week. I'll praise his review. He was blown away. Seriously impressed. But... There is a group of people, and and this is the bit that kind of blows my mind about, again, I'm not a financial guy, and I I kind of knew about shorts, but as in shorting stock, but there are people who make a lot of money betting that companies will fail, not succeed, which just seems like a really weird way to earn money, right? When you actually kind of, you're hoping that someone's going to fail, or, you know, you are relying on negativity, in the world, not positivity, on, on like crashing and burning, not building. That's like a weird place. Like a weird person does that. Is that just me? I'm a negative person. Like you, 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 like you really want to see the world burn, don't you? If you bet, you're betting on people and companies and teams failing and people being out of jobs. Anyway, maybe it's just me. Um, uh, they said that well, Wall Street Journal uh, put this really positive article out. Now that they've driven a Model Three performance, going, oh my goodness, it's just incredible. So many people then attacked that journalist, a Pulitzer award-winning journalist on Twitter. In the last few hours, he's completely deleted his Twitter to get away from the, the level of personal attacks at him as a as a person. Wow. Uh, out of control, Tesla short sellers have been harassing uh, him so much he deleted his Twitter account and they swamped his account with hundreds of tweets in less than a day uh, after hours of harassment over trivial things like why people w- were having a go at him saying why haven't you also written good things about the iPace uh, he just deleted it so they're criticising him for not taking a free junket to Portugal at Jaguar's expense to be wined and dined and given the VIP treatment as you always do on these things and uh, the journalists obviously they still write Hopefully, you'd think they write a balanced article or a video review. But because he didn't do that and didn't have the time to go on the junket to Portugal at, at Jaguar's at cost, the, in some way he's wrong. Wow. Personally attacked. Come on, Internet. We can be better than this. Well, someone who else, someone else who is really, I, I, I've only just kind of discovered him as well, really harsh on Twitter. I mean, like to the point of being like, properly cynical and yet when you read his articles online he's not like that so maybe it's just, maybe it's just a twitter thing his name is john rosevar rosevere uh, he writes for fool.com uh, he is properly savage towards elon musk on twitter but then again in his biog he says the person he would most like to meet in the world is elon musk so i can't i can't dichotomy there i can't quite work him out um but anyway, he is very knowledgeable, very even-handed in his writing, anyway, of articles. And he says that Porsche has developed a, a key piece of new technology for their upcoming electric vehicles. While the electric Porsches will be able to recharge using CCS DC fast charging, they'll also have this proprietary Porsche turbocharger, the 800-volt system, which is twice the industry standard, says John. And I hadn't actually thought about it. I, I, I You knew... They were coming with the 800 volt system and 350 kilowatt charge speeds, but I'd never actually thought about the connector until John spelled it out to say, yeah, it's going to be a proprietary system. So the Porsche dealers uh, we knew are going to have these turbochargers available. Some other sites may install them and Porsche may offer them to owners for home installation. But why would you? Why would you put a, a charger in your house which can get to 80% in 15 minutes. Surely that's once in a blue moon, a road trip, business trip, kind of long trip to see the family when you really need to. Hey, Porsche owners can do what they want with their money. Well, that's the news for today. Uh, We'll be back with a a full-length episode uh, tomorrow on Monday. Birthday day for me today, so a slightly shorter episode. Uh, The Big 4-0, or as I like to call it, I'm 20 twice uh, but two big congratulations first of all uh for those who listen in vancouver i hope you enjoyed the eco and science fair on fraser street yesterday a free event uh, featuring the solo uh ev on the mechanica test drive track plus some teslas and vws and chevrolets as well and evs in the park was yesterday here in the uk matthew nichols on twitter sent me a note only a little while ago to say, please give a mention to the success of EVs in the park 2018. One of the largest gatherings of pure electric vehicles in the UK, over 100 of them. Uh, The weather and the chat 
was great. Well done to the Renault Zoe Club. Yes, and Craig Tong. I hope I said your name correctly, Craig. Craig Tong for organising the event. I think I saw a picture on your Twitter a few weeks ago, actually. The first event was in 2015, and it looked like there was seven cars there. And now over 100 Pure EVs, many more hybrids turning up. And uh, people really having a great time in the sunshine and socialising. I'll see you guys next year uh, because, let's face it, 41 isn't a big birthday. But this weekend was a family weekend for us. In the meantime, the podcast back tomorrow for a brand new week. Uh, this weekend, though, if you're catching up on some older ones, yesterday there was a great interview. You haven't caught yesterday's interview, by the way. It was with Chris Wright. He's the CTO, the Chief Technology Officer of a company called Moixa, and they do solar and storage and really clever stuff with grid software and grid management of how you charge your EV, when you charge it for the best or the lowest carbon footprint and the best price as well. And how, not just this week or next month, but in one year, five years and 10 years, how you and your electric vehicle will be so much more central to the grid than it than you can even imagine. That's yesterday's show. It's labeled an interview special. I would encourage you to download that and give some feedback on that and let me know if you'd like more of these interviews to be done, uh, I was super psyched to be able to get to talk to him and uh, get somebody on the podcast who knows what they're talking about uh, for a change rather than just me. But if you do want the news, there's 187 of them waiting for you on iTunes and Google Play and Spotify and YouTube and TuneIn and Stitcher and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. And if you subscribe, well, you get them first and free and automatically. And if you want to leave a little review, it takes about two minutes, uh, maybe less than that, just to click on whatever star rating that you want to one one star or five stars i love you long time either way uh, and if you want to say hi on facebook linkedin and twitter just search in your browser for ev news daily because we come at the top of all of that have a wonderful day and i'll catch you tomorrow